Hello everyone. Today we are back with yet another interesting case report. A 70 year old woman presented with multiple asymptomatic swellings over the face for the past 7 years with a progressive increase in size and number over the years. Some lesions grew significantly in the last 6 months producing visible facial disfigurement. For this reason, she sought consultation. There was no history of similar lesions in any of her family members. On examination, multiple rounded, smooth surfaced, firm, non-tender, freely mobile, skin colored to reddish papules and nodules of varying sizes were seen on the face. There was a tendency to develop a grouping of lesions in the preauricular regions. Scalp examination was normal. Skin, mucosa, nails and hair showed no abnormalities. Histopathological examination revealed non-encapsulated tumor composed of closely set tumor lobules forming mosaic-like masses giving a zigzag puzzle appearance. By now, most of you were sure that it could be a case of cylindrome. Let me take you to a higher magnification. The tumor lobules were separated from each other by thin bands of hyaline material. On higher magnification, two types of cells were seen, larger cells with moderate amount of cytoplasm and a vesicular nucleus in the center of tumor lobule and small cells with little cytoplasm and compact nuclei in the periphery. Small cells were seen surrounding duct-like spaces and masses of hyaline material within a tumor lobules. A diagnosis of cylindroma was made based on typical histopathological findings. Now let us discuss the case. Cylindroma is a benign cutaneous appendageal tumor most often affects the scalp with a strong predilection for middle-aged and elderly females. Most often occurs as a solitary tumor. The rate of growth is slow and tumors seem to stop growing after reaching a certain size. They are generally asymptomatic but occasionally patient may have pain. Cases with multiple lesions tend to be dominantly inherited. Mutation in CYLD gene on chromosome 16Q12 Q13 is responsible for tumorogenesis in affected patients through constitutive NF nuclear factor kappa beta activation. Loss of heterozygosity at the CYLD locus has been found in both inherited and sporadic tumors. Mutation in CYLD gene occurs in three conditions that is brooks Spiegler syndrome, familial cylindromatosis, multiple familial trichoepithelioma. brooks Spiegler syndrome is an entity that contains cylindromas, trichoepitheliomas and spiroidomas. Whereas familial cylindromatosis is a condition wherein only cylindromas are seen. Multiple familial trichoepitheliomas contain only trichoepitheliomas. In the above case, if family history of cylindromas was positive, then the diagnosis could have been either BSS or FC. However, if the patient had Trichoepithelioma and spirodinoma apart from cylindroma, then the diagnosis would be in favor of BSS, that is brooks Spiegler syndrome. If the above patient had positive family history and only presence of cylindroma, the diagnosis could have changed to familial cylindromatosis. Although cylindroma, trichoepithelioma and spiroidinoma are usually considered harmless, there are reports of malignant transformation that is spiroidinoma into spiroidinocarcinoma, cylindroma into cylindrocarcinoma, trichoepithelioma into basal cell carcinoma. Currently, brooks Spiegler syndrome is not curable. However, possible treatment options for individual tumors include excision, Electrosurgery, derm abrasion, HBM YAG laser, carbon dioxide laser resurfacing, cryotherapy, and radiotherapy. This is it for today. Thank you.